An abandoned baby was found between some rails by a cat, and what the animal did next left everyone in awe. Cats can be seen as fairly cold creatures who only put up with people in order to get food and have a warm place to sleep at night, but that isn't always true, as shown by the heroic cat in the story. Adam lived in a small rural village in the Kaluga region of Russia. He had grown up there and loved his home and the beautiful forest that surrounded it. Throughout all of his childhood, Adam had loved to explore the woods, often finding new and amazing things hidden within them. One of these things was an old railway line that cut through a portion of the forest. The line itself was out of use, and the tracks were all overgrown, so Adam regularly liked to visit the tracks to hike along them. One day, Adam decided that he wanted to revisit the abandoned train tracks as it was a lovely sunny day, perfect for a long walk in the woods. He packed a small lunch and headed out into the forest, ready to get lost in nature. Little did he know that this day would change his life forever. As Adam made his way along the train tracks, he allowed his mind to drift and take in the peaceful scenery around him. But then, something unusual happened. He suddenly saw a shadow dart between the trees. Worried that it could be a wolf or another kind of predator, Adam stopped still and began to pay closer attention to the surrounding trees. The shadow appeared again, but it was very small, definitely too small to be a dangerous wild animal. Thinking that it was possibly a squirrel, as the man had noticed the creature had a big fluffy tail, Adam decided to carry on walking. He only made his way a little bit further down the tracks when he noticed something very strange. It seemed like the shadow was following him but keeping its distance. Curious as to what the strange creature might be, Adam decided to stop and see if he could approach it. At first, the man simply tried calling out to the animal in a soft voice to see if it would respond to him. The creature stopped but stayed within the tree lean, creeping forward a few steps. Adam was able to make out what kind of animal had been following him. It was a cat, and from the look of its shaggy and roughed up fur, it seemed as if it was abandoned. Being an animal lover, Adam didn't want to leave the stray feline out in the woods by itself. He knew that there were predators in the woods who would be able to easily catch and eat the little cat. The man began to creep closer to the weary feline, calling out to it to encourage the animal to approach him. But when he was within a few feet of the cat, he noticed something that shocked him. Adam could tell that the cat was female, as her milk ducts were swollen, which also meant that she had a litter of kittens nearby. Amazed by the discovery, Adam tried to get closer, but at the last minute, the feline suddenly ran away further up the tracks. But instead of leaving Adam for good, the cat stopped and turned around as if waiting for the man to follow it. Interested in what the cat wanted, Adam started walking down the train tracks again in the same direction that the feline was going. The duo walked for a few minutes before Adam suddenly started to hear something strange. It sounded like a baby's cry, and he was getting closer to it. Finally, the cat seemed to stop and jump down in between the rails before curling up into a ball. Adam slowly walked closer to the animal, only to see that it had cuddled up with her litter of three kittens and, astonishingly, a baby. The man was very confused and concerned. Why was this baby in the woods? Who had left it there? How long had it been on its own with no one but the cat and her babies to look after it? While these thoughts rushed through his mind, Adam quickly rushed over to where the cat was lying to get a better look at the young child. But as he tried to pick the baby up, the cat started to hiss. It seemed as if the feline had begun to care for the baby as if it were one of her own kittens. Not knowing what to do, Adam sat back and simply observed the unusual family. The man knew that he had to get to the baby somehow, as it would not survive on its own for much longer. But the mama cat didn't want to let him close. It was at this point that the man remembered the food in his backpack. The mama cat looked quite thin, and since she had to care for three little ones, she was bound to be hungry. Maybe he could gain her trust by offering her some food. Adam carefully took the bag off of his back, so as not to frighten the weary mama cat, and took out the chicken sandwich that he had made for himself. Instantly, the mama feline perked up at the sight and smell of the food. 
Adam took a piece of chicken off of the bread and slowly made his way forward until he was only a few feet away from the animal. The man softly called out, encouraging the cat to take the meat. Hesitantly, the mama stood up and sniffed at the piece of food being offered to her. She then cautiously took the meat from the man's hand and ate it in one bite. With the food all gone, the shabby kitty meowed at Adam and bumped his hand, as if to ask for some more. Adam laughed and fed her some more chicken. After a few more bites, the cat seemed to have warmed up to the man and began purring at him while asking for some love. Adam happily obliged and began to stroke the cat, with the mama feline seemingly trusting him now. Adam decided to try and reach for the baby again. This time, the cat simply watched as Adam picked the young child up. As soon as the man had the baby in his arms, the child stopped crying and looked up at him. Now that he was closer, Adam could see that the baby was a little girl and that she couldn't be more than a few weeks old. Shocked by the fact that someone could just leave a helpless baby all by itself, Adam checked the child over to make sure that she was okay. Thankfully, apart from a few little scratches and bruises, the baby appeared to be in good health. The man stood back up and began to make his way back along the rails when he heard a meow. Turning to look, Adam saw that the mama cat was watching him. The man then looked at the animal and her babies and knew that he couldn't leave them to fend for themselves either. He made his way back towards the felines and bent down to stroke the mama cat again. He softly reassured her that he was going to help her and her babies before scooping one of the kittens up and placing it in his backpack. He did this with the rest of the small animals as their mama watched. Once all of the kittens were safely tucked into the bag, Adam softly called to the adult feline and began to make his way back to his village. The mama cat followed the man carrying her babies. Once everyone was safely back in the village, Adam quickly set the kittens and the mama cat into his home before taking the baby to the nearest hospital. Once there, the man explained to the doctor what had happened and how he had found the baby thanks to the cat. The doctor was amazed by the story. He checked the baby over before telling Adam that she appeared mostly healthy, apart from being a bit dehydrated and hungry. Adam was relieved and asked the doctor what was going to happen to the child. The doctor explained that she would be put in foster care while the police looked into trying to find her mother. But if no one was found, she would be put up for adoption. Adam thanked the doctor and asked him to contact him if the child was put up for adoption. The man then went home to find that the cat and her babies had already made themselves comfortable in his living room. Adam then took the animals to the local vet so they too could get a checkup to make sure that they were all healthy. Once given the all clear, Adam took the mama cat, whom he decided to name Mystique, and her babies back home. A few months later, Adam received a phone call telling him that no relatives of the baby girl he had found had come forward, and that she was being put up for adoption. Adam immediately put his name up to adopt the girl, who had been named Willow, and after signing all of the legal paperwork, he became the proud father of an amazing little girl. The child was finally reunited with her unusual surrogate mother. Arthur is a guy who loves camping. He often traveled from his home in the Russian city to nearby mountains, where he would camp and spend days in the wilderness. Not only is camping a lot of fun, but it also gives him a chance to be alone and unwind from a hectic job in the city. Alone in his tent with nothing and no one around. This is really the paradise in Arthur's heart. Arthur works in finance and spends most of his working hours frantically on the phone, chasing people for money, making investments, depositing cash, checking stocks and shares, and generally keeping his hands full. It's a high-pressure, fast-paced environment. Arthur can't deny that he loves it, but being able to step out into the stillness of the wilderness is the perfect way to put all the stress and pressure behind him, at least for the time being. But one day, during one of his camping trips, something very unusual happens that changes the trajectory of Arthur's life forever. But what is that? As he stood outside the tent, lighting his small fire, reading and drinking his coffee, Arthur heard a sound. A whining, screeching, moaning sound. Arthur had been on these hills for a long time, and he had never heard such a sound before, so he was very curious and interested to know where it came from and what it might be. 
Putting the flask on the book, Arthur walked cautiously towards the direction of the sound. It's really hard to pinpoint where the noise is coming from because the trees are dampening the sound and the boundaries are reflecting the sound and making it bounce from all different directions. But eventually Arthur turned a corner and saw something that made him open his mouth. There, on the ground in front of him, lay two tiger cubs, not even a few weeks old, helpless and defenseless. As a cat lover, Arthur's first thought was to pick them up and take them to safety, but he knew they must have their mother somewhere, maybe she was looking for food, or she was nearby, keep an eye out with Arthur. Arthur left them in place anyway, though he kept coming back to check on them on the rest of the camping trip. But it was very obvious that no one came. Without their mother, the cubs are really helpless. When Arthur noticed they were distressingly thin, he knew he had to act. So he packed up his camping gear and picked up two cubs. He would take them home and take care of them himself. Returning home, Arthur finds his cat, the princess, preparing to greet him. She is a beautiful kitten who has had several litters of kittens. Arthur loved the princess with all his heart, and being able to sit with her and pet her one evening was another thing that helped him decompress after long, busy days. But when the princess saw the two tiger cubs, she immediately became curious. She looked from the cubs to Arthur as if asking what they were, where they came from, and why they were there. But Arthur didn't have time to introduce. He knew that if they were still alive, he had to feed them some food as soon as possible. The princess watched Arthur feed the cubs a few slices of meat and let them lick a whole bowl of milk, and that's when the princess did something truly astonishing. She walked up to the cubs and started licking them with her tongue. Although the cubs were as big as cats, the princess knew they were cubs and therefore needed care. It's as if the motherhood of the princess is turned on, and she falls into this role, as if she does this every day. Over the next few weeks, the cub grew stronger and healthier. Their weight came back and they started to have more energy. The princess takes care of them, and the cubs follow her as if they have just accepted their new role as the princess. She grooms the three animals before they curl up and fall asleep, encouraging them to eat, drink, run and play. Over time, the cubs began to grow taller. They become longer, taller and heavier than the princesses. Still, the princess treated them like her own kittens. When their fights got too rough, the princess would run over to stop them, causing the cubs to scatter in two different directions apologetically. It's an amazing thing. Arthur couldn't help laughing when he saw his kitten absolutely in control of the two tigers. Sadly, one day Tiger was too big to live with Arthur anymore. They are becoming a huge animal and of course will often damage things in the house unintentionally. Not only that, but feeding them cost Arthur a fortune, so he decided to take them to the local zoo and have them take care of them from now on. Oddly enough, Arthur felt a great sense of sadness as he stuffed them into the back of his car, especially when he saw the sad look on the princess's face as they drove away. Fortunately, zoos are happy to accept tigers. They recently built a great big new camp where tigers can run and play in an environment very similar to their natural environment. There's even a large plexiglass window where visitors can watch them play. So, after saying goodbye, Arthur delivered the tiger into the hands of the very able zoo staff. He has done his best. He vowed never to go back to the zoo again, lest he feel guilty for leaving the tiger behind. Over the years, he has kept to this oath. But after many years, the princess fell ill. She is getting older, and her body is no longer able to fight disease as well as it used to. Arthur took her to the vet and they told him it would be best to euthanize her. Arthur sadly agrees, but there is one thing he wants to do. He wanted to give the princess a final treat, so he went to the zoo, not sure what he'd find there, and put the princess in a cage. Arthur carried her through the gate to the tiger compound, where he immediately recognized the two tigers he had rescued many years ago. The two tigers saw the Arthur they had known, looking him up and down through the glass window. Not sure if the animals remembered who he was, he put his hands on the windows as if to pet them. The tigers looked at Arthur's hand, then turned away, as if he was as foreign to them as the countless others who came to see them every day. 
Arthur is sure they must not remember him, and drops his hand as they walk away, but the unthinkable is about to happen, and no one will believe it when they see it. Arthur then picks up his cat princess and shows her to the tiger. Immediately the two tigers lit up, jumped up to the cat, and began lovingly pouring down on the glass and rolling on the floor. They vividly remember the animals they raised and protected from years ago. And the princess evidently recognized them too. Arthur didn't know how this was possible, since Tiger had grown so much since they separated. But the princess knew that these two giant beasts were her children. Must be smell or some other animal instinct we can never really understand. The princess leaned her little body against the window and meowed at the tiger. In return, they also tried to rub their mothers. It was a very emotional meeting and the hearts of all who witnessed it melted. While Arthur isn't sure if the tigers will be able to remember their upbringing or anything before they came to the zoo, it's clear to all that they remember very well and still have love and affection for their mother, the princess. It just goes to show that even though the princess and the tiger aren't even a species, love is love and a good thing stays in everyone's memory for a long time. In that moment, everything is fine in the world.